Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you're excited for the beginning of this new year. Um, I wonder what new things are planned for you. Well, this is going to be a new year for Kings, like it's a new year for you, a new chapter in the life of the church at Kings. And we're so pleased that you're here to experience it with us. Um, we've got lots of things planned, haven't we, And Yes, we have. And uh, yeah, we hope that uh, at the very centre of everything that we seek to do in this 2023, that it will be Jesus who will be right at the very heart of all that we seek to do and all that we say uh, and all that we are as God's people. And I was reminded of those verses in Colossians where it says, uh, he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he may have the supremacy. And that's, that's our prayer, that in your life, in my life, in our lives, and in the life of this fellowship together, he, that is Jesus, will have the supremacy over all things. And so we just want to come and sing together. Um, as we are gathered, Jesus is here. Enjoy this. As we are gathered, Jesus is here. Jesus is here, joined by the Spirit, washed in the blood, part of the body, the church of God. As we are gathered, Jesus is here, one with each other. Jesus is here. As we are gathered, Jesus is here. Shit. 
to enjoy singing that song, Rejoice. We've got lots to rejoice about, haven't we? Loads of blessings that God gives us every day. And uh, we rejoice that we are church here together. And I'm just going to lead us in our prayers now. And then I'm gonna pray for Andy, who's gonna come and uh, bring God's word to us this morning. So uh, just uh, settle your mind, close your eyes maybe. And at the end, if you agree with what I've said, then say, Amen. So Father God, thank you that you make all things new. And we come to you at the beginning of this new year and we thank you for all that you've allowed into our lives in the past year. The good things and the hard things that have reminded us about how much we need you and we rely on your presence filling us every day. We ask that uh, your spirit would lead us each step of this new year. Ask that you'd guide our decisions and turn our hearts to deeply desire you above all else. We ask that you will open doors that need to be opened and close the ones that need to be closed. That we might make right decisions, that we might know your will in our lives. Ask that you would help us to release our grip on the things to which you've said no, or maybe not yet, or wait. And I ask for your help to pursue you first above every dream and every desire. Father, we come to you this morning and we ask for your wisdom, your strength and your power to be constantly present within us. We need you. We pray that you would make us strong and courageous for the road ahead. Give us ability beyond what we feel. Let your gifts flow freely through us so that you would be honoured by our lives and others would be drawn to you. We pray that you'd keep us far from the snares and the traps of temptations that you'd whisper into our ears when we need to run and whisper into our hearts when we need to stand firm for you, to stand our ground for the kingdom. And we pray, Lord, for the health and for the well-being of our church family here. We ask that you would be present here every time we come to worship you. And we pray that together we'd seek you first and you only, and that each one of our lives would reflect your love your grace and your glory. We pray for protection over our families and our friends. We ask for your hand to cover us and keep us distanced from the enemy's evil intent, that you would be a barrier to surround us, that we'd be safe in your hands. And we ask that you would give us discernment and insight beyond our years to understand your will, to hear your voice and to always know your ways and follow them with our whole hearts. Amen. And I'm just going to pray for Andy now because he's going to bring God's word to us this morning. So Father, I ask that uh, Andy would know your spirit. He'd know the anointing of your spirit right now as he comes to speak your word to us. Thank you that your word is powerful. It speaks into our hearts. And Lord, I pray that what we hear this morning, we will take on board and we'll Help us in our faith journeys to grow closer to you. So, Father, we come to you expecting to hear your voice as we listen to your word this morning. Thank you that when your word and your spirit combine, it's just wonderful. And we look forward to that. Amen. Andy, it's time for you to come and speak to us now. Well, it's great to be able to come and share God's word. Thank you, Sue, for that uh, warm 
uh, invitation to come and speak the word of God. So here we are then, a new series uh, now for the next few weeks based around the theme of unity and repentance. And we're grateful to Claire uh, for putting this uh, series together and encouraging us to think about these things uh, from the word of God. And following on from Mariana's excellent word last week as we met together and said goodbye to them, uh, which focused on the areas of perseverance, fellowship, and relationships with God and with each other. We have a new series and attempts to unpack the truth around our status as God's children and the responsibility that status carries. So Jesus in John chapter 17 uh, has three main uh, areas of prayer. He prays for himself, he prays for his disciples, and he prays for all believers everywhere. And we're going to focus on the last bit, the praying for all believers everywhere. And so from verse 20 of John 17, it says this, My prayer is not for them alone, that is the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they that you have sent, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for, for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. The Lord will bless the reading of his word. We've heard it said that the greatest need in the world right now, the most destructive social disease and the most devastating social illness is loneliness. We can be in a crowd of people. We can even be here in church. We can be in the biggest crowd in the whole world and still feel lonely. Loneliness stems, I might want to say and suggest to you, uh, from an even greater pandemic. The social pandemic, the thing that is at the centre of everything is individualism. I am the centre of my universe, that I need no one or nothing else to sustain me. That is a misnomer. For if we read the Bible correctly, we will understand that we were created to be in relationship with God and with each other, and that our need for companionship and connection is inherent in our human createdness. And that as a believer, a Christian believer, I am transformed from an individual to a member of the company of God's household. That's a spiritual transformation. That is something that happens inside us. We become the people of God. Born not of water or the flesh, but born of the Spirit. And the old has gone, the new has arrived. Something amazing happens in us when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus not just for salvation, not just for our destiny, not just for eternity, but right now we become a new being. A new being that is infused and indwelt by the perfect love of God. And that love needs to be shared with other people. And the truth that Jesus prays here in John chapter 17 transforms the backdrop of our whole existence as Christian people. There are many clubs and association, associations or groups that you could join and they would be good for you to participate in. But there's only one living organism where you can truly belong and that is the local church. The local church is God's means of saving the whole world. There is no other way. And we, have that, we carry that responsibility. And the local church is also the remedy for the pandemic of the age. It combats individualism and loneliness in a deep spiritual way. When, as we are joined to Jesus Christ by his life and death, as we are joined to each other by his word. I can think of no better place to be, actually. I can think of no more, uh, no more lovely people that I would rather be with than in the local church. I like Christians. They're not always amazing. And often, when we look at the local church, we can find fault. Absolutely. You can find fault in me, too. I know that. Um, but 
by some amazing spiritual means, we are united in Christ with God. And he dwells in us. What an amazing truth that is. And we have become his children. There are many examples of God's desire for believers to be joined together to show the world his love. Jesus said that, didn't he? I want, I want them to, to be able to share my love so that the world may know that I, you sent me, Lord. That is the premier reason for the unity that the local church should radiate. Our love for one another, fueled by our love and devotion to Jesus, our Saviour, and our reverence for God, our Father, should be the radiance by which we are known. Note Jesus' first words in his prayer for all believers, as we read in John 17. He prays that we will be one, just as he and the Father are one. Now we know the mystery of the Trinity, three persons in one being. It's, it's amazing, and it's almost, well, beyond understanding. You certainly can't put it into words. How do these three beings exist? How do these three persons exist in one being? It's, it, it's, that's why it's a mystery. It can't be, it can't be really articulated. But uh, just think and reflect on the massive implications of those words. May we be one, us, church. May we be one as he and his father are one. Wow. I'm sure we've not even scratched the surface of that type of oneness. Think about Jesus' words, I only do the things I see my Father doing. Is that true of us? Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Is that true of us too? Reflect on the New Testament teaching that Paul throws into the mix. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Is that true of you and me? Not only does the Apostle Paul encourage the unity that reflects the heart of God, but Luke, acts, uh, Luke adds in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, they've devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, and everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the Apostles. All the believers were together, unity. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Not only in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament, the Psalms remind us that where we are in unity, there the Lord commands blessing. Listen to the full Psalm, 133. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. What? If we could but grasp this amazing nugget of truth that we are to be in unity together, what a transformative uh, people we would become. So what have we learned from this truth of Scripture then? What What is unity and how do we work towards unity and what's its cost? Well, let's try and answer this and unpack some of those questions, shall we? So what is unity? Well, the state of being united or joined as a whole is the word unity. That's the the dictionary definition, but it lacks a certain depth. Perhaps Christian unity is a better definition, which says Christian unity is the result of God bringing together people of differing ethnicities, backgrounds, and social classes into one family or body by faith in Jesus Christ. It's the essential element of our faith in Christ and completely transforms the social, ethical, and behavioral attitudes and actions of its adherents. 1 John 4 reminds us that we cannot love God and hate our brother or sister. Mariana reminded us of that last Sunday. I wish I had the time to read the whole chapter to you. However, I can read the last few verses and ask that you read the rest of this amazing treatise on love. We love because he first loved us. 
Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Unity, then, is a love for your fellow believers that defies the notion of love that exists elsewhere. The love that comes from God to you and me is the love that must be shared with our fellow believers. There can be no other way to understand unity except by loving each other fully from our hearts. Unity is the way we express that love, putting our individualism aside, becoming a new creation that is born and shaped by God's outstanding love and then loving others as he loves us. Imagine that kind of church. Honestly, imagine that kind of church where that radiance and love exists, where the warmth of the love of the Son of God uh, is for all. That sincere and genuine love that exists would be the norm, not just on a Sunday, but every day of the week. So how do we work towards unity? Is it too late to commit to unity? And the answer, of course, is no, it's never too late. We can connect with the love of God at all times, and so our commitment to unity can be enjoyed at all times too. Not only that, but where we are to put aside our own agenda and follow Christ. That's probably the biggest barrier to the unity that the church has. I have come with my agenda. I want my needs met. I, you see, that individualism needs to be pushed to one side. It's a, it's a real barrier to unity. You cannot be an individual and be united with other people. He has positive and encouraging plans for you and for me, plans to prosper us and give us a future so that we can have confidence that God's desire for unity will be in accord with his will for us. You know, when we act in unity, when we are together, when there is one purpose and one mind, God commands blessing. Unity requires more, though. Faithfulness and devotion to the Lord and to each other is part of the deal, but faithfulness and devotion to the local church is also on the agenda. The body of Christ is a place where we grow and flourish, develop and thrive. We are committed to ensuring that happens as frequently as possible. Mariana reminded us uh, on last Sunday how important is church to you and to me. It is also a place where respect and honour and selflessness are constantly on display, where we genuinely care for each other, pray for each other and desire the best for each other, sharing in the joys and the sadness that each other experiences. The local church is a place where God, by the Holy Spirit, pours out his gifts and manifests his presence as we corporately worship and listen to his word. You know, if you're missing, you're missing out. So if you're not here, how do you know what's being said? How do you know where we are? How do you know what's happening if you're not here? And I I just want to encourage you again at the start of this year, put a stake in the ground, say, I'm going to be a committed devoted worshipper of God in the local church. I'm not saying come to Kings. I've never said that. I'm saying go to a local church where you are. Commit yourself to worshipping God and being in unity with the people around you. And you will see God will command blessing into your life. That's a promise. You cannot get away from that. I'm not promising you something that I can't deliver. I'm promising you what God says in his word, which always comes true. Because God is faithful to his word. So what is the cost of unity? There seems to be an immense benefit from living under the cover of God's almighty hand, sharing in the blessings of the Father, reveling in the salvation of the Son, and sharing in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's something amazing about that, being under his authority, under his covering, under his rule and reign, being in the kingdom. But I would be disingenuous if I told you that it was all easy. It's not. I'm required to submit to God's will in my own life. And we all know how hard that is to do on a daily basis. Just like great biblical characters, I do what I should not do and don't do what I should do. A la Paul. Submissive and teachable hearts are what is required to dwell together in unity, listening to God's word, his voice. And we will move forward together. This pruning experience is a hard 
and costly journey. Jesus talks about it in John 15. Listen to his words. I am the true vine, he says, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I also re will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So remaining close to Jesus and following his plans for our lives, being part of a local church that is biblical and spirit-filled, loving God and loving those around you like your life depended on it are the signs of a church where unity exists. So I want to ask you this morning, as you're sat maybe at home on your device, do you love like that? Do I love like that? Because I, I have to... I have to believe the stuff that I preach because I really, otherwise I won't say it. I really do believe this. Do I love like that? Maybe you think I don't. Well, please come and tell me. Look around at other people. Do you really know them? Can you really say that eye to eye that you pray for your brothers and sisters? Do you honestly care about what happens to them? What their lives are like? Can we honestly say that we are in unity where we love one another deeply from the heart are we a church that lives in unity and promotes unity in our actions as well as our words because everyone can talk a good talk but not everyone can walk the walk please reflect on these things consider where you are contributing to the unity of the local church because this is where people will see the radiance and the glory of Jesus among us and I hope and pray that we see that radiance and that glory of Christ here among us in the local church as we dwell together in unity. And we're going to sing a song just to conclude our time together. By your side, I would stay. In your arms, I would lay. Jesus, lover of my soul. Can you sing this with me from the heart this morning? Let's enjoy this song together. By your side, I would stay in your arms. I would lay Jesus' love. my love to grow stronger with every passing day by your side I would stay in your arms I my love to grow 
our time together this morning so thank you so much for uh, opening your device in your home uh, so that we could come in and share God's word and worship with you uh, this morning we really do appreciate it don't we Sue we do absolutely and if we can ever be of any help to you if you want to contact us you know how to get hold of us uh, website at the end of this film that there things come up that help you as well so if we can do anything if we can be of any help to you at all please contact us mm -hmm. um, I think it would be really good if we said the grace together to finish. Actually, mm -hmm. that's an act of unity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Saying the grace together. If you could mm -hmm. say that at home mm -hmm. and we'll say it at here, then we will be in unity together. We will indeed. So may the, may the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Bye for now. See you next week. God bless you.